if you are anything like me, and you might be, if you're testing for an even number in a line of code, then you probably do something like this. Now I'm just gonna switch to my phone camera so that you can see what I'm writing. You probably do something like this. If n modulo two is equal to zero, then, you know, do something here. And that will test whether a number is even or odd. So that's one way of doing it. But there is a better way, perhaps a better way. It could be argued that the, this way I'm gonna show you is not as clear, but it's a little bit faster, or it certainly can be. And the other thing is that it teaches you about bitwise operators. Today's sponsor, Tech Domains, is helping to make computer science education more accessible. And I'm gonna tell you more about that at the end of the video. Now, to be honest, depending on your reason for coding, you might not need to know about bitwise operators, but it can be useful to understand them. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the bitwise and operator, and then I'm gonna show you how you can use it to test for an even number and hopefully it'll improve your understanding of binary. And if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. So the bitwise AND operator, how does it work? Well, it takes two binary numbers and it compares the corresponding bits of those binary numbers. And if they're both equal to one, if they're both switched on, it'll return a one and it returns a zero for any other situation. So we have, for example, these two numbers, these two binary numbers, Let's check that you can see that. And here, if we were to do a bitwise AND operation, where we have one and one, well, that would return one. Where we have zero and one, that would return zero. We have another one and one there, so that would return one. But here we have one zero, so that's a zero, and here we have zero zero, so that returns a zero. So that is how it works. Now I just want to make sure you completely understand this. So here we have um, a little bit extra just to completely explain. Here in this top line, we have the binary equivalent of what we would normally write as 22 in decimal, and here we have the binary equivalent of 28 when you do the bitwise operator on these two numbers in binary, that will give you 20. So it'll look something like this, 22 and 28 will return 20. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. How does that help us test for even or odd numbers? Well, let's say we have four, which in binary is one, zero, zero. Okay, do you remember that's one here, that's two and that's four. So we've got four here. And we want to see whether it's odd or even. We're doing that test. Well, if we do a bitwise AND operation with one here, automatically these will be filled in as zeros. So these leading zeros will be placed here so there's something to compare. And then we get one and zero. Well, that's going to be zero. We get zero and zero. Well, that's also zero. And we get zero and one. Well, that's zero as well. So if we do an even number and we do a bitwise AND operation between an even number and one, it'll always come out as zero. So that's how we can test for it. Let's move on to the computer now and we can take a closer look. I'll just move that over a bit. Okay, so the operator that we need in Python to do this is the AND, the ampersand operator. So if you do this five and one, that will return one. Uh, and that's because that is an odd number and so we're getting a one. Now remember, and does not equal and in Python. This confused me when I first started learning Python because sometimes I couldn't remember the logical operator in Python for and and I would type ampersand when I meant and but they are not synonyms for each other. And 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 are two different things. One is a logical operator and one is a bitwise operator. So try to remember that. So going back to this example here, five and one 
is one. So we get one when we have an odd number and six and one is zero, seven and one is one and eight and one is zero. So we can see it seems to work. So let's write uh, a function. Let's call this function is even. Whoops, let's do is even. And it will take uh, a value n. And this first function is going to do it the old fashioned way using modulus. So let's do that. So if n modulo two equals zero, we'll return one, otherwise we will return zero. And now let's do our new method. So def is even two, and that's going to take an n there. And we're just going to say if n and one, now, if that returns true, if that returns one, that means that we've got an odd number. So we're gonna return zero and else we will return one. I hope that has been useful. Bear it in mind. And if you wanna find out more about bitwise operators, I've put a link in the description. I remember when I was learning to program, having the realization that computers aren't just something that arrive with software preloaded. They're machines that you can program to do anything you want. And that was a really motivating insight for me. But unfortunately, it's an insight that most children in the world might never get. Not down to a lack of ability, but due to a lack of opportunity. Most schools in the world don't teach computer science and it's young women from marginalized communities that have the least access to computer science learning resources. Today's sponsor, Dot Tech Domains, along with Namecheap, are going to donate 100% of the proceeds of the sales of their Dot Tech Domains in May and June to Code.org. Code.org is an organization that helps make learning computer science more accessible for some of the most marginalized communities in the world. Now, how can you help? Well, if you go to the link in the description, you can buy a .tech domain and those proceeds will go to help teach computer science to children that otherwise wouldn't learn it. Why would you want a .tech domain? Well, if you're learning Python or data science, you want to showcase what you're doing. And a good way of doing that is having your own blog where you write about what you're learning, write about what you found and share your code. So why don't you treat yourself to a .tech domain and by doing so you can help a kid learn computer science.